Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Electrification Enthusiasts recording. We are going to talk about how to do harmonic analysis of arbitrary signals using MATLAB. To demonstrate the example, we're going to take this traction motor system, the key components battery, inverter, and motor. We're going to look at the current. Actually, we're going to look at the current being drawn from the battery and we're going to look at phase A of the phase current going into the motor. So we're not going to use Simscape as a tool that you need for this. This is just what I use to generate the data for it. So I will provide it in the files. But to see what those signals are doing, the yellow signal is the DC current and the blue signal is the phase A current. So we have turn on, we're actually locking the rotor, torque is applied and we're locking the rotor to not move, then we're spinning at a constant frequency as torque changes. So you can see the current magnitude changes as torque changes. So that's what is happening on the electrical side with the currents. If we look at the mechanical side, you can see here's where that step change in speed happens, so it's essentially on a dyno and you can see the different step changes in torque. This is an example that MathWorks provides, but I'm also putting it in my content uh, at, the, at GitHub. So you'll be able to use this, but you are not going to need this. The assumption is that you're doing your harmonic analysis on real data that comes from uh, CSV. Let's open this outside of MATLAB. So we're going to actually start with the assumption that you have arbitrary data where you've got a time or you know your sample time and then you've got some signals. So I've got my IDC and IA here and we're going to want to do harmonic analysis. So we're going to learn how do we get some harmonic analysis results. So we're going to, this is, this is the phase A current. So we're looking at a window of phase A current and we can see harmonics on this. So we've got a standard FFT and a bar chart FFT. So we'll talk about both of those. We're doing the same thing. Um, this is also phase, the phase A current where we're zooming in at the low frequencies so we can really see the shaft speed or electrical frequency speed effect of things, but we can't see the switching effects. And then we're also going to look at the DC current here where we're going to really be able to see the switching harmonics. This is a three-phase inverter switching at 10 kilohertz. Uh, just so you know that on the DC side, the 10 kilohertz happens here and here. But because you have those multiple legs on the DC side, you're effectively seeing a 20 kilohertz harmonic because they're, they're, the, you have multiple half bridges essentially switching at 10 kilohertz and so the way they're offset and switched gives you an effective 20 kilohertz switching frequency. But so we'll be able to see how do we do a standard FFT and a bar chart FFT of that. But to get started for doing all of that we need to take the data from the CSV. So we need to get this data, this arbitrary data set, we need to get it into MATLAB. To do that this is a really convenient quality of life feature. You right click your data inside MATLAB and it will have an import data option. If you click on that, I'm going to clear every, everything. It will auto detect. So it's auto detected that this first row is names and then it wants to, so it wants to use these to label my variables and then it wants to grab the rest as data. Now, MATLAB really likes this table data set right now. It's totally unnecessary for the analysis we're doing, so I'm going to take, instead of putting this in a table, I'm just going to say, give me a numeric matrix. Just put it in the matrix. I hit a checkbox, and it will appear right here. Now, if I want to do this multiple times. I can also generate a script for it, and this script will do the same thing. So if I delete this, I can run this script, save it, and if I run it, yeah, 
gives me power quality data. It has the, the data in it, but I don't need this because I already made my own called import CSV. I can run this and it'll do the same thing, just power quality data. So I don't need any of those, but, well, I mean, I need import CSV because I already wrote it, but I don't need the new stuff. In this script I have that generates those plots, first I call import CSV. I am then hard coding the index to time DC current and phase A, and then I'm getting the vector time IDC and IA. So these are all important. And so I can do plot t comma idc, and we can see the window of DC current that I'm looking at. We can do the same thing with IA. Here's the window of IA. So you can see that I'm taking a subset of the simulation where the torque and speed are staying constant, because that makes more sense to do with harmonic analysis. Once that happens, we're calling this function. I wrote this function. The reason I wrote a function instead of just doing it straight with the default MATLAB command is because you can't do it straight with the default MATLAB command. This is the default MATLAB command. Y equals FFT of X. FFT. This function is very powerful, very simple, but its results in their raw format aren't really useful. We have to massage the data a little bit. So that's what this document shows. Um, basically, you go down here, you have, to, you have to do some commands to massage it. We're not getting the theory and why this works, because you can just cut and paste this and use it as is, which is what I did. But just to show you what happens if, it, if I do y equals FFT of IDC, it's going to give me a complex number. And if I plot y, you know, I just it's not going to tell me anything by looking at it. I need to massage the data. I need to get a frequency vector that lines up with magnitudes. And that's what this code does. This is essentially getting the magnitude of the, the FFT, and then we're scaling it so that we can run. So this is getting me my final magnitudes, and then this is generating the equivalent frequencies that line up with these magnitudes. So that's, that's what's happening in here. So if you really want to dig into the theory, you can, um, but it's not necessary. And then we, we plot our, our commands. And let's talk about what's going on with those in a bit more detail to discuss the bar chart versus the, the standard plot. Yeah, I can fit all of these here. So at the top of each of these, there's what I'm calling a standard FFT. So this is where we're just doing the FFT on the full data set and plotting it as is. There's nothing special about it, and it's pretty standard. And so here's for the DC current, we get that. And again, you know, we've got a little bit at 10, a lot at 20, a little bit at 30, more at 40, and that, that's just because of the way the 10 kilohertz actually turns into a 20 kilohertz effective signal. Uh, we can see like, okay, there's this, this spike at DC, which makes sense because this is the DC current, but most of the content is at 20 kilohertz. We might want to see it in bar chart format. It might just be easier to look at in bar chart format. And so why is one a bar chart and why is one not? Well, the, the little bit of theory I'll tell you about FFT is the resolution of your data is proportional to how many data points you've sampled in your data. So when I'm taking FFT of this large data set, I can get a high resolution FFT. If I take a small sliver of that data, like this edge right here, and take the FFT of just that, I will get a lower resolution FFT, which I can use as bar charts. Now, technically, I could write a command to sum these into categories around specific frequencies to also get a bar chart. But this is the easy, the easy way to do it. The normal way to do it is to just take a smaller window based on the resolution you want and to plot that bar chart. So I can't bar chart this because my resolution is so small that you wouldn't, you literally wouldn't be able to see it. I've tried it. If you bar chart this, you just can't see what's going on. So you'd have to um, sum over frequencies to do that. 
but we take a take a smaller window and we do a bar chart of that and you can see that in the code this is the first set where we're just doing it on the full data set and I use the standard plot command then for the bar chart I look at I calculate the number of samples based on what width is requested for the frequency so this is this input here so this is how wide from a Hertz perspective is one bar and so I calculate the number of samples I need for a window and then I essentially resample the data to that window and then I do the exact same calculation I did before and that because it's lower resolution I can use the bar command instead of the plot command and you'll get something that's visible but like if I change this to bar here I think I can do that and run it um, oh wrong one I bar charted the time domain I need to pay attention if I bar this and run it you just can't see anything so now I can't because the, the it's too small of a data set they're really thin if we zoom in maybe I can you can see there's stuff there but they're just really really small bars so they're really hard to see so at that point you just plot it instead of doing a bar chart but you have complete control this stuff's all going to be on github and linked below uh, one thing I did want to show that for those who aren't used to seeing these this is the motor phase so this is the low frequency content zoomed in and this goes out to the high frequency content so that's one kilohertz and that's 25 kilohertz the reason I'm doing that is because there's a order of magnitude difference between the speed of the motor so essentially your line frequency and the switching harmonics so the switching harmonics are out here at 10 and 20 they're really small in comparison to the magnitude of the phase current because the motor is large it's essentially filtering that current really well and then this is based on shaft speed so if we look at this one can I click there that X is 0.128 now this is in kilohertz so that's hundred and twenty eight Hertz why is there a peak around hundred and twenty eight Hertz well we're at a thousand rpm so a thousand rpm divided by sixty gives me sixteen point six Hertz but it's an eight pole machine so my electrical frequency should be eight that so 133 so we're getting 128 uh, 133 we're not spinning perfectly you can see that just the fact that this isn't a perfect spike but that's why this peak it's a, it's around 133 because that's where a thousand rpm would sit so that's why we see that plot there and then we have to go to the other plot which is right here this plot if we want to see frequency content again it's very small in comparison to the fundamental frequency so like if we do that we can start seeing so there's some content around 10 kilohertz there's more around 20 kilohertz and this implementation model is actually getting banding a lot of banding instead of a peak right at the the frequency and um, and that that's not aliasing because I experimented with the variable time step model that's actual banding from the this implementation and so that's that's just a really basic way to do your harmonic analysis uh, so use this FFT command and then scale it by cutting and pasting from the documentation and you have your harmonic content so hopefully that's useful um, thank you for your time if you have any questions please put them below they can be about the content here they can be anything electrification related they don't need to be like about MathWorks tools they can just be about standard concepts as well I'm more than happy to try and answer those and um, if you want other people to be able to find the channel please like and subscribe I hope you have a great day take care